also right for every man to be free. It's a goddamn privilege to be an American. All right, we are back. Season three, episode one. It's been a long time. Uh, nearly two years since we've uh, we've done an episode. A lot has happened in those two years. Um, so tonight our guest is Cody DeSoma from POF USA. We How's are very going, happy fellas? to have you. Thank it you. It's going Cody. good. It's going good. Um, we want to start this episode off. Uh, obviously, for everybody who doesn't know, you might see somebody missing here at the table. Um, our partner, uh, Johnny Phoenix, is not uh, not with us any longer. <clears throat> uh, we lost Johnny to COVID in uh, July of... Uh, July of 2021, and uh, he will be deeply missed, but uh, he will always be heard in our podcast. So we are going to start tonight's show off with uh, some firearms news. Uh, it's been a pretty active uh, couple months in the world here, um, starting with today. Two weeks. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah, right before SHOT Show with yeah, the pistol just, brace things, and yeah, they hit it hard. Um, starting two hours ago today, um, the Fifth Circuit uh, Court um, overturned uh, the law that uh, bars people with uh, domestic violence restraining orders from possessing firearms as unconstitutional. Big Joe, you're shaking your head. What do you yeah, think about that, man? Uh, I don't know. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I don't know. No, I don't really have nothing to say on that one. I mean... I guess I'm kind of on the fence. Just reason being is because anybody can place a restraining order against somebody. Um, I've had one placed against me before for something that was just absolutely ridiculous. But getting a restraining order placed against you doesn't mean you're you're guilty. You yeah. know, there's still a thing is uh, innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. But the thing is, there's. It depends on, you know, there's, I don't know, it's just, it's weird to me. I just think it's, uh, how you gonna, there's people that are, deserve to have restraining orders on them. Oh, agree 100%. And I just have a feeling that people that deserve to have that restraining order would be the type of people that would, you know, get a gun and do something bad with it. But, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of people that don't deserve it, so. That's well, I'm sure there's going to be other courts that are going to. It'll get batted around for three years, just like everything else does. Right. <laughs> um, White County, Illinois. And I'm pretty sure that's not a descriptive name. I'm sure that's just the name of the county. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, judge uh, issued a temporary restraining order to block Illinois' assault weapon ban. Now, with that, though, it was only for people that originally signed up for the lawsuit or something like that, wasn't it? It was like 800 individuals that Seven, signed up? 1,700. 1,700? Yeah. So, I mean, at least they still have their freedoms. Everybody else that didn't sign up, you're still, you know, technically a felon if you've got them. But if they get it overturned, I guess it... Again, there you go. Three-year basketball. Yep, know, exactly. It's going to be bouncing back and forth before anything ever happens. Just like bump stocks. <laughs> right. I'm sure that'll come up here a little bit later too. Yeah. Um, 2022. Uh, we were just talking about this before we started uh, the show here. Um, gun sales are still strong. Nick's processed 16.4 million background checks. Um, December of 22 was three million background checks. Forced high, uh, the fourth highest count on record. Um, I don't see it. <laughs> I mean, personally, um, you know, we 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 did all right here in the store this year. I, I don't think. Uh, I don't think we went crazy. As it definitely wasn't years, a banner but, year by any means. Right. No. Yeah. It's hard to beat twenty and twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was another animal, you know. Um, Florida. Uh, they introduced on the thirtieth. They introduced a uh, a bill for constitutional carry in Florida. If it approved, it'll bring the total to 14 states, and uh, there are 25 states now total for open carry in the United States, which so we're 
pretty much split right down the middle. It should be 50. It should be. We still have the thing called the Second Amendment, but you know what? I don't make the laws. I just got to follow them. I didn't really get into the article. I thought there was an article on this afternoon that uh, said the Supreme Court may limit California's ability to make these ridiculous gun control bills. I'd they're, hope so. Yeah. I mean, because a lot of what they're doing, it's, you know, murder is already illegal. I mean, how many more laws can you add up to say that something's illegal to do? You know, and you're everything's so emotional in this country right now. It, it just drives me crazy. Everything's based on emotion, not actual logic. There's no logic to it. It's just, I feel bad, so I got to change the law. They're just, they're, it's not really them trying to stop the bad guys. It's just making it harder for people like us to even get guns. It's crazy. I mean, the guy that's going to go out and commit any crime with a, with a firearm, take all the firearms away. They're still going to find, I mean, look at Timothy McVeigh, diesel and, and a fertilizer. bunch of fertilizer in a van blew up a whole building. I mean, crazy right? finds a way. So you can you can try and limit the, you know anything you want, but it doesn't stop crazy. Crazy finds a way. And you know, it comes down to the the whole argument. You know, when they give these ridiculous uh, the FBI, you know, violent crime statistics. You know, there was so many so many you know gun deaths in the United States. You 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 take the suicides out of the equation, and it's not. I mean. One's a lot, you know. I mean, obviously, if it's a it's a family member or something like that, I, you know, I I don't want to make light of that situation at all. But when you take three hundred and thirty eight million people and you only have several thousand, you know, that's that's a really it's it's less than the fork kills. It's less than cars kill. It's less than booze kills. It's less than drugs kill. It's less than hammers kill. And the thing, too, I mean, you see it every day on the news right now. There's somebody that, that you know, a lenient DA is letting people out that have committed a bunch of felonies, and then they're going out and doing this. And I mean, they had one yesterday, uh, I want to say it was out of New York, and the guy the guy got arrested and goes, I, it's okay, I'll be right back out. You know, that's the mentality. So these people know that there's no punishment. When you're talking about violent criminals just getting out, Mm-hmm. And they have no remorse for it. Yeah, you, you you see, you know, DAs like Kim Fox and mm-hmm. and mayors like Lori Lightfoot in Chicago, and and you see the problem that they have there, and it's like, yeah, yeah I understand why. Mm-hmm. Guys like us though that are trying to trying to follow the laws and you know exercise our Second Amendment right are the ones that are getting you know hardship for it. Yeah, the average the criminal. I mean. Most of these guys are doing violent crimes really have nothing to be afraid of because they know that it, they're going to get right back out on the streets. Cashless bail and bang, they're back to doing what they want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that uh, jail reform they did in New York really didn't help matters over there. Nope. <laughs> or here for that matter. You know, I it's a, it's a... You know, I hate to say I'm glad that she's out of the equation, but that the county attorney that we had here was horrible you know we had a situation here and and uh and they the the guy was out on parole from a was from a uh, a state state penitentiary out on parole he came here caused problems and uh they arrested him threatened to kill a couple people while he was getting arrested um damaged a police car and they let him out or didn't even didn't even hold him on bail, yeah. and then I get a call several months later from City of Phoenix attorney, and asking me if I would testify against him, and that's because he had already uh, he had already gone and done the same thing that he did here to another person, but he hurt that person. So you know they just keep on letting them out, and that's crazy. They just wait until he does something more crazy or something. Yeah. You know, maybe they'll keep him when he kills somebody. Exactly. I don't, you know. So just the system for you. None of it makes any sense, man. It's I just I watch the news and I shake my head, raise my blood pressure, and I turn it off. I this whole world's upside down. Have a hard time watching the news. Yeah. I get I get so upset when I watch the news. I just I go on YouTube and I just pick and choose. What I'm gonna, <laughs> like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read that story or I'm not gonna listen to that or that. I just I don't know. It's just right. every day there's something crazier and crazier. 
you know, besides like LinkedIn, I don't have really any other social media. So, it, but it's, you know, friends, family send me stuff, and I'm like, okay, now I got to turn on the news and see what's going on today. You know, and yeah, it's like I said, it just raised your blood pressure, man. Just shake my head all the time. Like, what is what is going on? People are just crazy. So, uh, shot show. We just all got back from shot show here this last week or two weeks ago. Um, I suppose it's show season for you. You got all the. Well, fortunately, I don't have to go shows. to a lot of them. I just did, yeah, I just did shot show. Yeah, uh, Jeremy and Raphael and Lucas are going to a bunch of the different you know, MBS Worldwide Sports Inc. stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to Iwa at the end of this month in Germany. Oh yeah, um, so nice. it's like shot show, but for the European market. Right. Uh, Is it as big or bigger? Uh, I, I want to say historically, it has been you know same similar to Shot Show. At last couple years because of COVID, they really limited the people and and vendors that could go and set up to display. So this will be the first year back. I'm excited to see what it's like. Um, you guys went to the 22 Shot Show, right? I mean, yes. I personally, as a vendor, loved it because it was you know get around everywhere and it just I don't know it was awesome for me. This year was that more normal shot show, just the craziness. The Did non-stop. you think it was? I thought, the, it, I thought it was a little slower than normal. I thought it was it, a lot it, of more traffic, definitely. Than, Did you? Yeah, because last year, there, there was you can actually walk yeah. without having to bump out. I, well, I think a lot of that's also now that they split the two venues up. I think that, and, and that lessens the traffic in, in, in both of them. That could be. It just seemed like the flow of people was nonstop. Where, like last year, you could have a meeting or conversation with somebody for a little bit without right. a million other people walking up and asking more questions. You know, so I don't know. It, it just had that. It had that pre-COVID shot show feeling to me. Just the constant, you know, people coming through, which was good. I mean, that's what you want. Everybody looking at the product, but uh, I don't know. That twenty-two shot show was nice. Yeah, yeah, but. A little more even keeled and relaxed, probably. Yeah, and, and um, just business wise, it would, you, you're just right down to brass tacks, you know. Yeah. And everybody was coming through, planning out their year, and I just, I don't know, it was efficient. There's definitely a lot more vendors out this year than 2022. I don't think. I think there was a lot of empty booths. Yeah, and I think we had a lot of the international companies show up that couldn't because of all the COVID restrictions. And, right. You know, um, Especially walk around the Caesars Forum. I mean, there was a lot of businesses there that weren't there the last year. So, I think it's a major, major, major companies that you know, you know, Sig doesn't do it anymore at all. But you know, last year you didn't have the Rugers, the yeah. RSR, or Davidsons, and you know, a lot, a lot of major. Yeah, like Lipsy's had their booths up, but nobody was there. Right, I remember that. I remember that. But uh, Joe, what did you see uh, Shot Show this year? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I thought it was, uh, there was quite a few different, you know, I like going to like where the smaller guys are at and seeing their little innovations and that they got going. There was a couple couple of different AR variants that they had that were like super cool takedown types, but um, kind of pistol bracing kind of just ruins the whole concept of it. But other than that, I mean, there's a couple, couple of firearms that I liked. Uh, Canic had the st- uh, stainless frame that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the Smith and Wesson 5.7 was kind of cool, kind of similar to like the PSA one, but it was pretty cool too. Um, Tombstone, you guys, was, that was probably the biggest thing that I seen out there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you guys, you guys had a lot of traffic. Yeah, no, it was crazy. It was man. like every time we walked by that booth, it was just nonstop people in there. Um, you see anything cool? It's like the uh, I. I think the most innovative thing I saw was the the Fox Trot Lima shotgun. I don't know if you guys saw that yeah. or not. I don't think I've seen that. But they took a, they had a simple both semi-auto and pump action, full size twelve gauge, that folds into a backpack gun. Really? Yeah, it folds Holy right behind shit. the receiver. It's almost like a, uh, a like a takedown button you'd see on a on on an AK right behind the receiver you hit it and just folds up into up into See, that's kind of similar to that AR that I saw but I can't remember the name to save my life yeah it was a super <laughs> small booth but that's why you take pictures but yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> sometimes um, you just get all excited you just forget to pull your phone yeah. out but 
I thought that was pretty cool. And they also their their uh, their pump action was a was a was a spring assisted pump action. So oh really? Yeah, you pull it back and it just kicked right back yep. into the into the uh, firing position, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of cool. Um, but again, you know, I, you kind of stepped on my segue. I was gonna say, you know, the, the hottest thing everybody was talking about was the tombstone this year. It was. Did um, you get a chance to walk around and stretch your legs, get away from people? Uh, a little bit on Friday. I mean, because this year, like I said, we didn't have a lot of the international side. Um, or last year, we didn't have a lot of that. This year, it was like every international customer we had meetings with. So, I mean, the first four days were kind of just jam-packed. But Friday, I got to cruise around. But even at that, it's you walk through a booth and you, or you walk near an aisle or something. You go, oh, I know that guy. I'm going to go talk to him. And you just get distracted, you know. I don't know. That it's you guys get it being in the industry you just meet a lot of people and so i mean th yeah. that friday is usually <clears throat> the most relaxed day around so everybody's kind of right don't say hi and you know yeah. see you in the next show kind of thing right so on the tombstone um i was lucky enough i i, I saw her probably two years ago i would think yeah. is probably right about when when i was shown it um but give us a little bit of the backstory on it so tombstone obviously being patriot ordnance factory um we've always made ars i think with this product we wanted to do something americana so when we were thinking about well, what's more americana than a lever action mm -hmm. patriot ordnance factory we're in the southwest in arizona so we kind of got the name from the ok corral um the city of tombstone down south it was just with this we were going to do it in some different calibers but with the phoenix magazine coming out we wanted to give that that magazine some more platforms let's do it nine mil um I don't know, it's just a fun gun man and the biggest thing with this is i started looking at you know we're you, on here we were talking about the nix checks for backgrounds as a manufacturer i look at the annual manufacturer report to see what other companies are doing you know what's my competition doing and i just keep seeing henry's numbers every year i'm like man whether it's an election year or not those guys are just running away why they make a great gun a, a great gun but let's be great honest action. <laughs> a, it's a great great gun great company but right. let's be honest what's their competition yeah you know marlin was was kind of out now they're starting to pick up steam again now that ruger's got him but before that i mean yeah what was their competition i mean i don't have enough fingers and toes to count every ar and every bolt action manufacturer there's really not a lot of competition in it. And so we started looking at it like that, and I'm like, let's just try it. Right. What's the worst that could happen? that's where it came from it was something my you know me and my dad and uh our engineer zach started on and just kind of played with it over the years and you know during COVID, it was so crazy we didn't really have a lot of time for r d so the last year we really picked it up again and refined it as best as we could um, from where it was when you first seen it yeah yeah now i noticed on the receiver they're stamped multi is there a plan nine by 21 okay um for the international market okay because uh, there's a lot of countries in europe that can't have nato calibers so right nine by 21 it fits in the same magazine oh, so okay. that's really what the multiples for okay as far as other calibers yes we're looking at doing 45 acp 308 556 um the 45 is going to come out next because we're going to roll it out with the phoenix and 45 um but yeah that's kind of the plan going forward with it um but why that one says it, I mean, like I said, it's because of 9 by 21 for the international. That's what I was wondering, too. That's what I was kind of looking at one, just seeing. I was like, oh, maybe they're going to do it in 45 or... No, I noticed, obviously, the uh, the stock is Magpul. Is that an out-of-the-box 
stock or is it something you and Magpul worked on together or no it's a it's a Magpul 870 their SGA stock so mm-hmm. any 870 butt stock will fit that uh, we kind of designed the lever loop to go to fit that profile okay um you know my mom really wants to push some some wood stock so you know we were having a conversation with wooks working on the stock together with them but um as far as that stock that's just an out-of-the-box magpul 870 sga stock okay you guys stuck with the flat three and a half pound trigger for it or what's the weight on the it's three and a half pound and and honestly that was more of just a coincidence oh was Um, it based on the clock spring design that we've got in that that's just what it came out as it wasn't like we were trying to get it but it it just worked that's cool you know and the thing with this gun looking at it it's obviously lever action magazine fed it's based off 1873 winchester so it's a toggle link system um so the toggle length is where we get out of that 1873 is where we base this gun around. Um, that gun it was obviously it was tube fed, but it had a, when you were rack the lever, it had a lift gate that would basically act like a, a follower in a magazine to help load the round. So it was, you know, kind of an easy transition for us to take what they did with that, modify it for nine mil and, and uh, do that different hammer spring system that we came up with. To my knowledge, the, there's not another magazine fed lever action out there is there well i mean the bond just came out but that so the bond and that uh um fight lights are both in 556 there was a guy uh in europe that was making but it was more of an ar that Mm -hmm. was a lever ar that was a nine mil um but those haven't been imported into the u.s as my knowledge this is the only uh lever action or nine millimeter lever action in the u.s right now and uh, I know that the we've had, what, two or three of them come through so far? Right. They've lasted collectively maybe three hours apiece. <laughs> you know what's crazy is that you're, we're getting a lot of calls from, like, what, New Jersey, New York, you know, real restricted states. I mean, they're loving that gun. And are you guys getting a lot of people from that area or East Coast? Yeah, and it's kind of, you know, you talk about unintended consequences, right? Like, we just wanted to do something different, but then you start looking at it, you're like, it's the first gun that we make as POF that's 50 state legal. Because um, most of our ARs being semi-autos, we can't right send into some of those certain states. Um, so, yeah, it was just a, a weird happenstance. It wasn't like something we planned. But, uh, but yeah, that's New York, Connecticut... Uh, Massachusetts, places like that that have those restrictive gun laws. We've been getting a lot of interest for it out of there. I don't know. And you guys, all everything's your guys' design as far as the rail and the fluid of barrel, everything was just in house. And yeah, yeah, the, honestly, on this, the only thing that's besides the butt stock, I mean, we use a mil spec, you know, AR magazine catch and mag release but other than that everything's 100 percent designed in house made in house um there's really you know i guess the sights from excess or from a from a shotgun but everything else on there is 100 percent designed and made in in our shop here in phoenix and i don't know if you've been over there lately I've never yeah oh you've never been i've over never the even factory? been to the old oh. building I, uh, okay just... yeah i mean your machine shop has like doubled in size in the last couple of years have to to keep up um and honestly just to stay more efficient i mean the technology and the machining side it it advances so much as every year it's you know it's kind of it's a big investment but to keep up with the cost especially with labor rates and everything if you can be more efficient in your cut times and your your tool changes and stuff like that it means a lot so we try to obviously bring in the newest equipment and like you said we've expanded a lot but we've also replaced a lot of machines All right. All right, we're back. As you can tell, we've done the gun switch out. Uh, this is the new uh, FDE Phoenix, 35 round, 9 millimeter. Cody, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Phoenix? Uh, so the Phoenix is a... Uh, uh, 9 millimeter semi-automatic um, 
we're doing full auto now, which is a lot of fun. I sent you guys the videos of it. Um, Goldberg here at POF. Now it's time to take a dump with my Phoenix because it's full auto Friday. Basically, the charging handle you can move from left to right. Our Gen 4 lowers, so fully ambidextrous. Uh, it's blowback 9. Um, a lot of people were giving us a bunch, you know, a headache about it. And didn't like it. Why don't we do something else? But it works. With that, with the magazine, the way that it's a single it's a single uh, feed, double stack magazine. If you look at the, the trunnion on that, where it's got the feed ramp, it's like a big f funnel. I mean... You're just not going to have feeding issues with that gun. We've shot a lot of rounds through it. It's, it works, you know. And so that's the one thing with this too. It's a lot smaller than other blowback nine millimeters. If you look at the receiver height and then the receiver width compared to other ones, and it's because of the the tungsten carrier that we're running in that. Um, I don't know. It's, again, it's just a fun gun, man. I was trying to be something different. Everybody's doing, you know blowback nine mil ars that you know use the buffer tube we wanted to try something different you know and that's it's kind of one of those things with any of our products if it's for you you know if you don't like it hey man there's plenty of other great companies out there i mean i don't know pick your poison right and that was uh, uh my next my next point was i've i've been seeing a lot of fully auto videos on the phoenix here in the last couple of weeks Really, with that, um, we had some law enforcement that was reaching out asking for it. Um, so, you know, our, one of our guys at the shop, John, made up because this isn't a, a traditional AR as far as the carrier going back in the buffer tube. Uh, we couldn't use a traditional sear, so we had to make a make a different sear in the sear trip. Got it to work, and I don't know. We've been. I want to say this week alone, we put four thousand rounds through it, just testing, destructive testing. So we've been shooting a bunch. Um, and like I said, it's just fun, man. There's really nothing funner than a semi-auto or a, uh, a full-auto 9 mil. I mean, MP5s, I don't care what it is. They're just fun. Mac 11s, you know, Uzis. Especially if you're on stuff. somebody else's ammo tab. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're a blast. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, I just saw the video on Instagram of uh, Goldberg shooting the Phoenix. I thought that was the first time I've seen somebody shooting full-auto. Yeah, he came in town uh, for Barrett Jackson actually, and stopped by the shop. And I'm like, oh, dude, you got to shoot this thing, you know, because we're everybody in the shops. Like, what is that? What is that? You know. So when he came by and shot it, and I'm like, do we got to do a video? Yeah. Super cool guy, man. I said, how is he? Is he? He's like, awesome, man. Laid back or? Yeah. I think all I don't know. I always picture wrestlers always just like really like. Dude, I, yeah, up. I mean, I thought so too, but no, he just. I don't know. It was Break like talking to one of you guys. Yeah, yeah. it was just totally down to earth, easy to talk to. Now it's time to take a dump. Entertaining, man. He's got easy a lot to of stories hands. too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so, I'm sure. I met him at Sturgis probably. <laughs> yeah. Twenty three years ago, I think it was two thousand where I met him. Ago. But and it was when he was in his. He was still wrestling at that point. A big car guy, though, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so you what I was doing twenty three years ago. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> shit in your that. pants. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's you guys are really an innovative company. I don't know that you guys get it, the credit for how innovative. I mean, I know you got the the Golden Bullseye Awards with the Revolution and and stuff, but I don't think you get the you get the credit the credit in the industry for how innovative you are because i mean you really you, you really broach some <laughs> chris is dying <laughs> what i always tell people is, is like i always feel like you guys really perfected the piston system when it comes to your ars because when i'm shooting other yeah other ars the recoil is just it's just amazing with your guys's you know with the revolution or the the edge it's just your piston system runs so smooth it's crazy i mean honestly i think you know i think a thing for us is we've done we've never really spent a lot of time marketing and doing that we were just doing we were building guns that we wanted right mm -hmm. i mean when i was a kid my dad would take me to the big sandy shoot and then we would go to knob creek you know we were constantly shooting machine guns and breaking stuff and that's really where that the piston 
we were building fouls in the garage and my dad's like we need to put that piston system on an ar because this gun runs and ars were constantly having to clean and whatever when we're going to those ranges for the machine gun shoots that's really where it came from and i mean 20 years of building the same product i'd hope you'd get good at it after yeah. a while right so well, I mean, that's not necessarily true, though. I mean, you look at, there's other manufacturers out there that have been building the same product for 20 years, and they're still junk. Like who? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bold move, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Speak on that, But no, seriously, I mean, th th I mean, there is, you know, I mean. No, it's true. It's just, that's why I was always telling POF, they they got the perfect piston system. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing for us, like, uh, you know, me and my dad, John Caps at the shop, we're all machine gun guys. So our 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 version of destruction test is a lot different than I've seen at other places. Uh, when we're gonna build a new product, that's the first thing that we do is put a sear hole in it and then run it until something breaks. Okay, well, what broke? Why? Let's fix that. And that's that's really when I'm talking about refining it, it's just because we're constantly blowing through ammo trying to figure out how to make parts stronger, last longer. The stupid things like the, you know, I say stupid, but like the roller cam pen and the anti-tilt buffer tube and some of that stuff is all because of destructive testing. We're like, why does this keep happening? How do we fix this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the heat sink barrel nut doing the e square for the extractor you know and when we were making the full auto p308s we were breaking extractors every couple thousand rounds i drove my dad crazy that's really where e squared came from was just like i said just heavy abusive testing and so you know quality from other companies i don't know just because i i don't buy a lot of other guns building them myself i'm just going to make something i want right but i just know for me we're going to go out and destroy things and figure out how to make it better that's awesome. With uh, the heat sink barrel nut, I know your, your dad, when he was on the on the show, he, he touched on it a little bit, but I think seeing the uh, the torture test on it when, when the it set the, the meltdown video from we Iraqi veteran. We used to have playing in the old shop. Yeah. Remember that? We just had yeah, it all You know how many PLFs we sold because of Yeah, just of had it loop all day. But... Uh, it was never more evident than in that video where you you see the infrared on that gun and you know just see it go from white to to red to cold you yeah. know it's stopped right there and was black cold you know yeah that that's the biggest thing i mean and i've always said this about our product in particular i can tell somebody all these things until you get it in their hands to shoot it none of it clicks uh we had a, a guy from gun talk um tv show came into the shop and i'm explaining the revolution he goes okay so it's really light it's 308 this has got to kick like a mule and i'm like well no you know it's less carrier mass smaller gas port size you know it, it doesn't as recoil as bad as you'd think and then he shot it and he's like dude you explained all that stuff to me but until you shoot it it didn't make sense i'm like this guy's lying this thing's got to suck to shoot it kind of goes full circle into anything that we make. I mean, really, until people shoot it, you can explain all these features. And to most people go, okay, that's cool. I want to shoot it for myself. Then they go, oh, that was awesome. Now I want to know why it's awesome. It's just easier to sell that way. Um, but, yeah, with the thermal videos, that really shows the genius behind it. And, again, when you think about a heat sink, they've been using heat sinks on things for decades you know this isn't like it's some brand new we just applied it to the piston system how can we help the bolt last longer it worked yeah all right well next step uh here is the uh the elephant in the room yeah <laughs> chris's cough <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> um oh that course, elephant last week ATF came down with their uh, their heinous new ruling on the uh, arm braces. Um, as I'm sitting here looking at the uh, the Phoenix with the brace mount on the back of it, which obviously could be a stock mount as well. Um, what, Cody, what do you what do you think about it as far as from a manufacturer standpoint? I mean, I think on the manufacturer side, you know. It was probably August of 20 when they started. Did you see the original where it was a point system, what they were going to change? Mm -hmm. Right. When that came out, a lot of the 
a lot of people were panicking. Um, you know, certain distributors, hey, we're not buying pistols with braces on them until we figure out the law. So like you see, when we came out with a Phoenix, it would just had the sling. It had the option. Somebody could put it on, but from the factory, we didn't do it because there was people that just wouldn't buy them. Um, so this, you know, it not only affects people that bought them before then, but for manufacturers, I mean, we had to change our whole product line mid-year because of that. And it wasn't even like something that ATF had put out publicly yet. It said, hey, we're thinking about doing this. And you had some of our biggest customers were like, now we're done buying them because we don't know where this is going to go. So it kind of put us into a, you know, a hard spot. And now you're looking at, you know, 40, potential of 40 million people are going to be felons overnight because of this. It's, it's crazy. I don't know how this holds up in court, but in court, but it'll be like everything else is going to get a ping pong that bounces around for three years until we figure out what's going to happen. Well, to give you a little insight, I don't know the date of when we had your dad on the show, but after that episode, remember he told us, he, he said that, he's like, I got it on good word, the ATF is coming after arm braces. He's like, uh, he's like, you're probably not going to be seeing them in the near future. So a little bit of uh, insight there, you know, it's, uh, and that that's at least two years ago. I know that, you know, yeah, but. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure it was because he got in his accident in June. Yeah, it would have been August of 21 when this started. And like I said, we had a couple of big distributors, and now we're not buying any more until we figure out what, what they're going to do with this. I think my personal opinion is, you know, that they've already set the legal precedent with the, with the bump stocks. I, th I think it's, it's probably going to go the way of the bump stock and, and get overturned. You know, who knows however long it's going to take to get there. Um, three years. It's going to be a shitty three years. Yeah, maybe that's exactly what he's saying. And yeah, I mean, it's so. that's the way our legal system works, though. It's a, everything would just get knocked from this court to that court. It's going to be a drag out, and the only people that benefit from it's lawyers, man. My only concern is that there was a larger agenda with getting people to register SBRs. Yeah, I mean, since the NFA was in 1926, the biggest you know mass registration attempt since then. Right. I mean, if you think about it. It's huge. It's just... Um, you know, it was like I was telling you earlier, I feel for a lot of the customers because they're calling in, you know, asking legal advice of us. I'm like, I'm not an attorney, man. Same here. You, you know, I can them. read the document and I could tell you what I think, but that doesn't mean I'm right, you know? Yeah. I still have to go through, you know, ask our local ATF, what can I and can't I do now because of this? And they write those so ambiguously that... Everybody who reads it has a different interpretation of it. There's no, no two people interpret that document the same way, yeah. you know. And it's yeah, and that's what you've seen it at ATF or at Shot Show. Everybody had a different opinion. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, how it all plays out. I think at the end of the day, it's going to end up much like the bump stock thing. It's just unfortunate. It's going to be dragged around for a long time. You know. Based on the way the bump stock went, it was because it wasn't a congressional law. It was an executive order. It didn't work. And so much like ETF changing, I don't know if they have the power just to change that or if it needs to go through Congress. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Well, you got anything else that you think you no, want to add here? <laughs> that was pretty much it. It's just, I don't know, I just, I don't like the whole situation. It just, it bothers me. I feel like they just try to find out what what really hurts and that's what they go for. Yeah, and it's, it's not like there's any kind of reasoning behind it, you know. I mean, it's it's not like we're, you know, it, it's a stock where it makes the gun, you know, more accurate. You know, it's, it's, it's. I think it's just they're just trying to flex. That's pretty much what it is. I, I, the, if you look at just the laws in general, though, right? We're still a capital capitalistic society. We have a lot of entrepreneurs and innovative people. Doesn't you can make all the laws you want. Somebody's going to find a way around it because the people that write these laws aren't actual gun people, and it doesn't matter. Just this industry, you can make any law for any business. If you're not an expert in that, somebody's going to find a way around it. I mean, look at 
If you if you read Bullet any bill, in California. If you read any bill, mm-hmm. it, it, they're really comical. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, some of the stuff that these lawmakers put in bills is absolutely common. They wanted to get rid of assault weapons in California, so somebody made a bullet button. Nope, bullet buttons are bad, and now you have the juggernaut kit. And I'm like, you're still getting the same gun. Yes, it, you know, it's not as easy to change the mag, or you can't have the mag capacity. People still find a way around the laws. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's one of, and then you hate even saying it, but it's like, when are these people going to learn? If you're not an expert in this, somebody's going to find out how to do it. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. Absolutely, Agreed. absolutely. Well, Cody, we appreciate you coming down. Hey, yeah, man, I appreciate buddy. it. Thank and you guys. Uh, we can't get wait to get out and shoot the uh, the uh, tombstone and maybe one of these fully auto phoenixes. That looks yeah, like yeah, man. Come up to the shop and we'll take one out. Absolutely, for sure. All right. Well, uh, until next time, we're signing out. Boom. There. <laughs> Thanks, Cody.